I wanted to introduce myself to you today. My name is Tim Janish. I'm the uh, parent of uh, two students here at the ACE. My oldest daughter is going to be attending, uh, is going to be entering the IB program next year. And I wanted to talk to you today to find out a little bit more about the IB program, about your experiences, and hopefully you have some things to say that will be helpful to other parents who are considering sending their children to the ACE. Perhaps you could each introduce yourself um, briefly and just tell me where you're from and where you are in school right now. Uh, well, I'm, I'm Farah and uh, I'm in DP1 now. Um, I'm 17 years old. Uh, IB is pretty challenging compared to the MIP program. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more work. Um, you really, uh, you get taught uh, discipline mm -hmm. uh, on a very high scale and uh, the, um, the development of your work compared to before before that uh, before you start the DP program is is humongous if you see how much uh, your work if you compare your work of the of not, let's say now the end of the year compared to the, f the beginning, you can see there is so much more structure, so much more depth into your work. And uh, th the discipline level uh, also combined with the academic level, uh, I think that's where the strength of the IP comes in. Great. Sounds like a huge challenge. Yeah. Um, I'm Chloe and I'm French and I'm 16 years old and also in DP1. And I mean, I don't, I don't think the IB is that challenging. Like it is, but you have to be really like good with time. But I don't uh, like. There's a lot of work, of course. But I mean, I was doing the MYP program as well last year. I wasn't at the school. I was at a different school. But it was pretty challenging as well. I mean, the IB does go more in depth, like she said. But it's not uh, that much more difficult. I would say. Like it's not. You shouldn't really stress out about it too much. Okay. Thanks. You said. Uh, yeah, I'm Yusefa. I'm also 16. Um, I have been an ace since MYP1, so I have kind of seen like the difficulties that come uh, progressively across the years. And I have to say, I kind of agree with Farah, like IB is very challenging, but also what she said, it's not something you should stress out about too much if you're disciplined, if you take care of your time, because it's not about being smart in the IB, it's about doing your stuff at the right time and making sure you're in front of the deadlines, you know, way ahead of them. And I'm not saying I am personally there, but uh, <laughs> I think it's part of the learning process. So by the end of uh, the two years, we'll hopefully be what the IB Learner Profile wants us to be. Great. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Ravel and I'm Dutch. Um, I'm also in DP1 and I came to ACE in MOP5, so this is my second year. Um, Personally, what I value very much about the IB is that they aim to make you a whole round person. So um, they don't aim to look for one strength in you, but they really look for that um, very much whole round person that you c that everyone can be. So. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Maybe maybe just to open things up a little bit. Um, I think some of you have already answered the question um, a little bit, but can you compare your experience being in the MYP program and now this year making the shift into the IB program? How, how is it similar or different? I think in MYP we were like spoon fed, to be yeah. honest. Um, if we would have to add a lab board, and I'm saying lab board because I take a lot of sciences, mm -hmm. so I know I have experience in that. So if in MYP, I would be given a lab board and be like, okay, this is the equipment, this is the method, this is what you're supposed to do, this is actually how you're supposed to write a conclusion as well. Now it's just like you get a title and it's up to you. You come up with your materials list, you come up with the method, you come up with everything, and if they don't even have the materials, you actually have to make sure that you order them or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a lot more uh, independent learning. I think definitely the shift that we had from MYP to DP was a big one. Um, it was something that a lot of us had to get accustomed to and some of us took a long time to deal with. Um, I think it's more because of the work pressure that comes along with it and they require you to be a lot more independent, like mm -hmm. Yusefa said. And it's definitely something challenging, but I think that um, it's very much possible for everyone if they have the discipline yeah. to do it. It sounds as though discipline is one of the the key yeah. skills for well, being successful. Procrastination is one of the most used words in IB anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Anybody else want to compare MYP with the IB no, program? I, I mean, I think they pretty much said it all. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, great. Is there anything when you when you look at the IB program, you know, as you as you approach the end of your first year in the program, what would you say are your your greatest likes or or even dislikes with the program? In IB? Yeah. I like that like they make you really culturally aware of everything okay. like it's not even about all about education it's just like knowing other people around you and like uh, like re they're really international about it so like they uh, allow you to find out about other cultures or religions like you might have not known about before okay. okay I think that's pretty useful how how is that done? How do you how do you because Yusef is talking about um, science and independent work? How how is the the cultural awareness developed? I think it's like within every subject. Like it's not typically one subject. Just in every subject, they kind of include the whole religious or uh, cultural thing about how you have to be aware of it. Like especially in English class, we study a lot about uh, cultures and languages and everything and how the whole English language developed and how that affected different countries and stuff. Good. But then there's also the hexagon, you know, the Ivy hexagon with yeah. the TOK in the center. Maybe you could back up oh, and sorry. tell me about uh, the, uh, the hexagon. The Ivy hexagon is basically, um, mm -hmm. you have the three core uh, IB principles, I guess, or assignments. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to phrase it. It's TOK, extended essay, and uh, creativity action service, CAS. Yeah. Those three are like the core um, aspect of the IB program that are unique to the IB. And then you have the subjects. So you have the different groups of subject areas. You have the sciences, uh, human sciences, so geography, business. Uh, you have mathematics, art, languages, A, and languages B. Those are the groups. And then that's where you pick your subjects from. And my point is going to be the culture thing and the religious aspect. I think a lot of that stems from the core, from uh, TOK and CAS, because in CAS, it, uh, it encourages you to go out in society and to uh, interact with others, um, all four of us. Wait, did you go, go to South Africa with us? No, three of us. All th three of us, we went to South Africa to help uh, in a settlement there, a illegal settlement there, to help out the kids and uh, the people there as part of CAS. So it really opened up this new door for us. And TOK opens up a wide range of uh, possibilities with religion yeah. and debates about how do we know what we know in every aspect of our lives? Mm -hmm. Okay. What does what? Do, forgive me. What does CAS stand for? Community action and service. Okay. And TOK stands for theory of knowledge. You guys obviously know this stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great. We have to. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what you're doing. Good. Other other things that you might that you might like um, about about the IB program. Um, I, in the I, did, I don't know what you were saying about the preparation for universities and things like this. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the extended essay, and we have, we are required to do a theory of knowledge essay at the end of um, our IB course. And um, to, I think that these uh, very academic works that we are uh, made to do are also very, they give us a good step forward towards what we're supposed to do later. And if we want to do a university that it gives you good preparation for what's to come. So I think that's a strong point as well. Tell me a little bit more about the essay. Um, the extended essay is basically, um, it has to be an essay of about 4,000 words, I believe, and it has to be about um, a subject of your choice. It's usually linked to something you're doing at school, and you have formulated a research question, and um, you write, you research, and you write about what your findings are on this topic. It could be either an experiment or something social or economic, it doesn't matter, so, okay. yeah. Okay, Farah, what are you doing, uh, your extended essay? Uh, what's the subject of your extended essay? Um, my, I'm doing it on how does uh, religion affect the economy. Okay, great, yes. anybody else? Uh, yeah, I'm doing it about how the, why the UK never switched to the Euro. Uh, I'd, how I'd, like to, I'd like to know that, that myself. <laughs> <laughs> great, you saw it? I'm doing it on medical patents and how they restrict innovation. Uh, within um, the pharmaceutical market. Interesting. I'm doing mine on um, if the, the uh, resources in the North Pole are going to lead to the next world war or big conflict. In the okay. Wow, four completely different, yeah. Yeah. four completely yeah. different subjects. So who who helped you to who helped you to define what your what your big essay um, question or your big essay topic was going to be about? I no. think it's also the independent thing. Yeah. It's a lot of, yeah. um, you write three proposals with three subjects, so you have three choices. 
in uh, order of which one you prefer the most. Mm-hmm. And they, someone else actually looks at them. I think Mrs. Sikas looked yeah. at them, mm-hmm. our coordinator. Then he gives it to each subject-specific teacher. They look at them. If it's, um, if it's good enough, then they will allow you to do it. And they move along uh, the three proposals. So if the first one's good, they don't even look at the other two. Okay. But they just go along your preference. But then you have to meet with your supervisor and like develop your question further because usually the three proposals weren't really uh, detailed, yeah. and it has to be really detailed. The research question really like narrowed down. Mm-hmm. So like you just keep on meeting with your supervisor and like really figuring out exactly what you're going to do. Okay, that sounds like something completely different than what you did in in yeah. MYP or, or. Well, in MYP, you of course have the personal project, yeah, which is yes. something. Yeah, it's kind like of kind of like an introduction to extended essay. Yeah, because it's funny. Yeah. Back in MYP, they were always like, "Personal project is going to prepare you for extended essay. You're going to be but, yeah. you're going to be able to do great if you do go on your personal project." But it's like a complete opposite of personal project because I, I don't mean to disrespect extended essay <laughs> or IB or anything, but personal project is fun. Extended yeah. essay is academic and it's uh, serious and all that. Personal project, you do creative things. Um, you did something creative as far as I remember? Yeah, I interviewed homeless people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's fun. I, I, I personally made a fun, script. I guess. What did you guys do? I, I, made, made, a cook- a, I made a cookbook. I made a rap song. <laughs> See, and I always have to write a mini thesis, so it's a huge step yeah. up. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like a, like a thesis or even yeah. a dissertation that you would have at university at university level. When they describe it to us, they introduce it like, "So you guys are gonna write a mini thesis mm-hmm. in these two years?" Yeah, that's like, why like okay. the IB is so recognized by universities because like I mean I take chemistry. We're in the same chemistry class, and our teacher, you know, he told that he tells us a lot like, "This is what you would do in university," you mm-hmm. know, like do your own labs and stuff. And also the extended essay is also like dissertations which you do in university. So I think. That's why the IB is good in that way that it like prepares you for university. It's not just like high school and then once you're in, you know, you have to make that other big step to university. Well, here that step you made already from MIP to IB, yeah. which I think is actually better because you're still in the same like area, you're still in the same school, and you make that step, but you're still in your comfort zone, mm-hmm. rather than going to university, being in a completely different area, and then having to make that huge step of like educational wise as well. Yeah. That, that's very interesting because that leads on really to my next question. Just for the fun of it, what, what do each of you plan to do in a year and a half when you graduate from the ACE? Um, and how do you think the IB program is going to help you? It's a question I don't really know the answer to yet <laughs> because I have no idea what I want to study yet. But um, I'm sure that the way we've been challenged is going to help us a lot in mm-hmm. um, university. and. I'm sure that we get a lot of support from teachers and they help us out now and I know later on that's going to be less in, in the way that we get um, help and things and it's easy to talk to teachers but I think that the preparation we get here is a good one. Yeah. And but you are planning, although you don't know what you're going to study yet, you are planning to go on to university? Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, great. We're just out of curiosity, where would you where would you attend? Here in Holland or somewhere else? I have no idea yet. Okay. I really don't know. Okay. Are you gonna study here? No. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, um, well, I'm planning on going to the states or Canada, mm-hmm. and I want to do medicine, preferably. Oh. So I kind of know where I'm going with it, but I've I, I've also just set on the fact that I don't I can never say for certain like this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So I think it's. Yeah, like she said, IB's prepared is great. And like she said, we get recognition. IB is recognized so much in uni- universities. But I would like to say one disadvantage about IB. Um, I believe it's not a problem with IB itself. It's more how universities uh, accept IB students. It's much tougher to get into yeah. the universities than the A-levels, for example. Not to uh, criticize oh, the, the A-levels. Than the yeah. British yeah. system? Not to criticize okay. that system, but it's... Yeah. As far as I know, uh, as far as I've heard from people who do that system, they have three subjects, and if they get A's in those three subjects, they can go into those universities. And we have yeah, like, like six or seven subjects, and an A is equivalent to like a six or a seven at mm-hmm. least. So if we want to get to those universities, we have to get basically four marks in every subject. Mm-hmm. So I think Which it's is much more difficult. Yeah. So, so in fact, the IB is actually more challenging yeah. than the British A level system. Yeah. And well, it's we can't really say that because we haven't done yeah, it. We haven't done it yet. Yeah, like but, but what your understanding of it is? Yeah, <laughs> the IB, but they don't. I don't think university is like. They, it's not like they don't have an idea of how challenging it is, but they just. I don't think they know exactly like 
what the grade boundaries and everything are that like compared because I was looking at if you go on UCAS, you can sign in and it's like you get tariff points according to your marks and everything. And it's really different. Like uh, if you get like a seven in the IB, it would be so yeah, equivalent to an A. But then if you get like a six, it's also equivalent to an A. Mm -hmm. So, but then a six and a seven here could make a big difference into like which university you get into. So, what do you plan to do after, uh, after you leave the ACE? And, and how do you think the IB program is going to help you prepare for that? Oh, well, I'm still in the process of finding out. And mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. So, okay. but I am sure that there is going to be something great coming out of, or uh, not only about this program, but just in the future. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm still not sure what I want to do exactly, like in university, but I'm going to take a gap year. Okay. In, uh, so yeah, the 2014 and 15, because I mean, my brother came back from a gap year and he learned like a lot of things. I mean, he learned not only like about cult different cultures and how people live, like he went to Southeast Asia mm. and um, he learned like how to manage like a budget. He learned how to live by himself and like make his own food and figure things out by himself which I think are like really great life skills because sometimes it's not all about like the educational things. Mm -hmm. It's also about like knowing how to like live with yourself and like find yourself kind of. Um, I understand that you know you're, you're, you have a year and a half to go before you, uh, before you leave the ACE and it sounds like everybody's planning on, on going on to you know, greater things. Um, what skills do you think that you've learned in the IB program are going to be most helpful uh, in the future for you? Discipline. Mm -hmm. discipline, yeah. discipline, 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 and like, time management. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a, there's a, I guess. Yeah, I guess the IB learner profile covers it. The uh, IB learner profile has things like uh, being a thinker, being knowledgeable, principled, balanced, all of that. I think um, the IB is set in such a way that we are automatically working towards that. Even though in our subjects we never use the word like, hey, now you're becoming a thinker, like now you're being knowledgeable, no. But through the assignments, through extended essay, TOK, everything that binds it all is the IB learner profile. That's what we're working towards. Excellent. Huh? Yes, and I, I guess for me personally, it, well, mostly what the IB t teaches me is the organization, mm -hmm. um, how to deal with time management and think um, if you have such a big workload especially next year what we will have to to balance it out with your with your life basically is it's a great skill to always bring with you and later in your life you will work for some somewhere or whatever and you will always have your own life too so to balance it out and to already learn that in this pro this program that's I think the best skill Excellent. Ravel? Uh, yeah, I very much agree with that. And um, I kind of want to fall back on um, in making you a whole round person and how they try to get everything they can out of you. And especially this whole time management organization thing has been very important for many people. And we've realized that starting things early helps. And I mean, even though we're sometimes ignorant and still don't do it, um, it takes a lot with the test weeks and exams that we have to get yourself to study every time and keep up, keep in track with everything you're doing. So I think that the IB very much prepares you for what you want to do later. Great. And then finally, Chloe? Um, yeah, I think, I mean, they've pretty much mentioned everything. Okay. So that's fine. Like also the cultural thing that I said is pretty good that you understand like different cultures and that everyone is different. I think that's also a really big part of the IB. Well, I'd like to I'd like to thank you 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 all very much. Um, as I said, um, one of my children is going to be entering the IB program next year, and I know a whole lot more about the IB program, what it has to offer, some of the the good things and the bad things um, that that I need to be aware of um, for for the future. So thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.